Hi everybody. I thought I would have a mini chat with you out here on my porch because it's such a beautiful day. And one thing you all have probably heard me talk about in the past is that we have multiple businesses. And I thought that I would give you an example of how that looks because we talk a lot about hustle culture being good, hustle culture being bad, um, entrepreneurship. You hear that a lot in the space of fin personal finance. And I thought maybe I should share with you a little bit about our money story and our businesses. And kind of, it's been something I've been hesitant to talk about because it varies greatly and the money varies greatly depending on what you're willing to do and how much effort you're willing and risk you're willing to take. So we do have three businesses. I'll try to give a brief description of my, um, first of all, I'll start with my story and then my husband's story and our story. So back in 2001, I had been voluntarily, I had been practicing yoga for many, many years since I was a child. And I started practicing on PBS when I was a child. And I became very sick with this autoimmune illness that I have in my 20s. And I was the only exercise, I'd always been active, and the only exercise I was able to do was uh, asana practice or posture practice and meditation. And so I had kept that up. And I had been also going to college while I was a mother and a young mother. And I had shared yoga with the other students in my classes and they saw me doing this. I was getting my degree in early childhood education and the college took note. And at the time, my ex-husband had also just gotten hired there and I was um, in school, okay? And they saw me and they offered me a job teaching continuing ed yoga. Back then, there wasn't certifications like there are today. That was just kind of starting um, the whole certification process. And I would end up teaching community ed. The certification process had just started. I ended up getting certified and becoming a registered yoga teacher in the very beginning of when Yoga Alliance, if you are familiar, started registering teachers. Sorry about the wind, it's blowing my phone around a little bit. And I ended up teaching at that college. I was there for almost 11 years, but seven years in, they came out with these new um, registrations or certifications, if you will. And I had all of the experience to have them, which allowed me to start teaching uh, workshops. And so I went from teaching classes to teaching workshops. So that was another price point. And I was just kind of like a self contra uh, contractor, right? I was going in, teaching workshops, getting paid. Um, I wasn't an employee, teaching at yoga studios, health clubs, and things like that. Around that time, I around 2008, I believe it was, I kind of had an epiphany that I would really like to train teachers because I really enjoyed doing workshops. And I was qualified to do that. So around 2009, um, I applied and was accepted and started teaching school. Now, I hadn't really ever thought about making like a, I just, I enjoyed getting the money to pay the groceries. I just, it was a great mom job, right? It was a great job to have as a mom, someone who was interested in health and fitness. A lot of times the places I taught when I was at the health club, they would give me a free membership. They had free childcare. So it was just a great thing. Well, I opened that school and fast forward, I kind of, I was in a really bad marriage and I realized that like, okay, I have enough money set back in the school and some things culminated and I was able to leave my husband. I didn't have much money. I wasn't making much money. I was making on average eight to $15,000 a year when we split up, but I had the school, I had developed my skills over that 10 year period to teach classes, workshops, and the yoga school. And I only thing I knew to do was expand my offerings. So I went to my boss at the health club I was at and I asked if they had another job and they gave me another job in administration. I became the fitness instructor over a 3,500 square foot nonprofit, the Y. So, and um, I was, I left my job at the college because my ex-husband was teaching there as well. And I started teaching the school and I expanded the school into two a year. And I got more certifications to teach a children's teacher training, a prenatal training and a 200. And over the next 10 years, 
I would go around teaching the school in different locations and I would teach two a year on average, except for the year I took off to write my book. And, um, and during that time, I ended up also writing a book. I got it published. And I would say that most of my money over those years, I averaged between 8,000 a year and 59,000 a year at the high end. Low end was eight, high end was 59. At 59, I was hustling my behind off, traveling, teaching yoga, yoga workshops, like maybe 10 yoga workshops a year, two yoga teacher trainings a year with an average of 10 to 20 people. Um, and I was teaching classes as well. I became very burned out as you can imagine. And I got offered a job working for a doctor in a lifestyle medicine program. One of the only ones in the country that requires them to have a yoga therapist. I also became a yoga therapist, um, another certification, the highest level. So at this point I have all the certifications one can have in the yoga world. Um, I was in a documentary and all of that. Well, I became very burned out after 20 years and I told myself I would save up enough money to replace one year of my highest income and I would leave the school and I would continue working for the doctor. And I did that for six and a half years. So I'm on sabbatical right now. I'm not sure if I'll ever go back to teaching at this point. I've been teaching for 22 years. I'm tired. Um, I believe 100% in the practice of yoga and all the health benefits that it has, mental, physical, emotional, and even spiritual. It can be used as part of your, enhance your own spiritual practice, no matter your religion. So that was my business and um, it was very good to me in all the years of being a single mom because it allowed me to be home when the kids were home and to travel when the kids were staying with their dad or when they got older, they could stay by themselves. So. Anyway, that was my yoga business. I'm still currently certified and I'm still currently selling books and I get some residual income off of the books and things, but it's not a lot. Now, I met my husband in 2011. We did not get married right away. We were both coming out of divorces and we dated and my now husband, we've only been, we dated for seven years and then got married. We've been married for, I'm sorry, we dated for six years. We got married. Five years ago we've been together over 12 so almost 13 this year and um, we've been together ever since I never dated anybody else and we had um, he had a dojo my husband now is a ninth degree black belt in Taekwondo he had a dojo and he also was working had gone back to police work he's been in and out of police work for 37 years and my husband's father and family were church builders. Back in the olden days, my husband is 64, um, they traveled around and built churches. And so my husband is very good at, at doing that. And on the side, he would do kind of like, not really handyman work, but he would like do roof replacements, roof repairs, build decks and build fences. And it wasn't really what I would call, a, I must say it was a legitimate business, but not so much in its structure. And he didn't really know any different, right? He he did turn it in on his taxes as a subcontractor, but he subcontracted out work like that. And just carry on that we would kind of see, I told him, I said, this, it has a lot of potential. There aren't a lot of good people around doing this that are trustworthy um, in the roofing, especially it can be, um, <laughs> There are, some, there are some interesting folks who work in the roofing business, in the roofing world, and it is a very hard business to be in, and that draws people who are really, have to be pretty brave souls, really. Um, my husband is one of those souls, but he's also, you know, he's a former Bear Rap Bronco rider, a Marine, police officer, and we just decided that we would grow this business, and I had become really good at business. My family has owned stores. Um, and been in business their whole life. My dad owned a flight school. He was in a corporate pilot for himself. My um, stepdad owned a store. My Just growing up, my family had a car dealership. My great-grandparents, they had a funeral home. And my aunt and all of like my family was in banking and finance. So I was pretty, I came pretty naturally at business. And I, we together, I just said, I think you can grow this thing. Let's get you a business license, an LLC. Um, an accountant, you know, we did all the things. So I said, the thing is, you gotta do everything, you know, by the books to establish yourself 
as a credible entity, pick a name, all that. So we did all that and it just kind of snowballed over time. The only thing about a roofing or construction business is it varies a lot with, for us particularly, the weather. And it also varies a lot with the um, price of materials, financing, the housing market. Um, all of these things affect construction. So for us in particular, weather is a main thing. And then right now, insurance is really cracking down. Like you might have a policy and you get a hell storm, but they might only cover part of your roof. If so, like if the front of your roof got hit, but the way the hell hit didn't hit the back. So things are changing all the time that, you know, insurance is always trying to find a way to not, <laughs> some are better than others to cover things or not cover things. So we do a lot of insurance work and things like that. Um, it's, I will be glad when we're out of it because it's a very risky business and it's a, it's a very expensive business. The return on the investment is not high, but we have a very good clientele base. So I had been helping him with that. Oh my goodness. I would say we were about three or four years in when I really encouraged him and helped him to get that started. So I want to say it was around 2013 or 14 that I helped him get everything done. I started doing his books and all of that. And that has just grown. The thing about that business is we've, we make enough to support ourselves. However, we have health insurance and my husband has a pension through his police work. He has a very flexible job in the court system now. And he basically has to be there when the judge is there. And then he's kind of on call and flexible when she's not there. So um, at any rate, that business, some years it doesn't do very well. And some years it does very, very well. So if we get a hell storm through an area where we have a lot of clients, we're going to make a lot of money. If it's a really dry year and we have a drought, like we did a couple of times in the past five years, it's not so good. So we've continued to keep multiple things going on. Now, our third business is not a huge one and it's not one that I even take that much money out of. It's more of what I would consider a tax shelter. Um, it is profitable. We built an, a cabin on our property, a small cabin. I don't know if I can legitimately pick this up and show it to you or not. It is, can you see, can you see it's right there in the picture, right there. Um, we built that cabin. Our youngest son has autism and he needed a place to live and it was not, and we, I wanted to buy a house for him and my husband didn't want to spend the money. And so he was like, I think I can build something cheaper. So we built this little cabin and much faster than we anticipated, my son got approved for a housing program. But the kicker was the housing program would not let us be the provider. He had to go to a non-relative, which I'm sure someone abused the system and that's how that happened. I was an accidental short-term rental host. So we're 20 minutes outside of town um, in the country and I did not really know how we would do. And I also have been sick a lot the past couple of years. So we opened that Airbnb in January of 2020 and you know what happened then. And for about two years, I had some family come and stay with us because they lost their jobs during the pandemic. Um, but for the most part, it's been very successful as much as I can keep it open because of my health. I'm not able to clean it as much as I would like to be able to. And it, it's a bit of a hassle. It does turn a profit because my husband and I, like we do for everything, we pay cash for it. When I sold my house in town, I used part of the money, the profit from that, to put in here and we paid as we went. So we built it as we could pay for it. It's really cute. It's 320 square feet. I'm sorry, 420 square feet. It's a big studio. It's adorable. And we have a five-star rating. We've had, I don't know, like 80 guests at this point. And yeah, it's I charge 115 a night, a $55 cleaning fee, because that is what I pay the cleaning person to do it when I pay her or when I do it myself. Um, and I basically just use it to, like it pays for my cell phone. Um, it helps pay its taxes, insurance, the water bill, the internet, the electricity on it. And then I can use it 
when I have family or friends who want to come and stay with us. I also am able to write off all of my Airbnb travel because it is um, research when I go stay at Airbnb. I don't abuse it. We have made a little bit of profit every year, but I had $2,000 worth. I think I made 8,000 on that last year and I had $2,000 worth of travel that was a billable expense on there. So it's a great way for me. I could take out $500 a month in income from it, but I choose to let it sit in there for more projects that are part of the Airbnb. So for instance, I have a guy coming here shortly to give me a, um, we're gonna have it painted and we're having our house painted and that painted and I can pay for it out of the money I have collected. So someday we'll probably have a family member who will want to come and stay there or live there, a parent or a child, and that's fine for, we will charge rent, but it would be nominal, of course, just to pay for the expenses. Um, it can also be a supplement to our income. I could open it up a lot more if I wanted to deal with it. We don't have a washer and dryer there, which is something I might add at some point. Um, and it's just a nice little way to, you know, I can, like for instance, if I buy toilet paper and someone uses a half a roll of toilet paper or paper towels and I replace it, I mean, that sounds gross to some people, it doesn't bother me, um, but, and I replace like the half used thing, I can put it down there. Or when people have used up almost all the shampoo and conditioner, I buy like high-end brands. I can take those and put the new ones down there and take the old ones down here. So it's a great way for me to use things. A lot of times, like I'll buy fresh towels and linens down there when they've been used for about a year, I will wash them and bring them down here and replace them up there. So it's a great way for me to, I don't care, and I buy really nice things down there. And it's just a great way for me to help to get what we need, but also keep that place really top, you know, in top order. So those are our three businesses. Um, my husband's currently at his W-2 job, and I actually, possibly have a job interview tomorrow. Someone sought me out, so I don't know how that's gonna go. And I am considering it. I'll just see what it is. I don't know exactly what they're gonna offer me. But um, yeah, so that's those are our businesses and that's how we grew them and that's how we paid for them. We have never run our businesses on debt with the exception of when I started my yoga business when I was married to my ex-husband, I put $1,150 between 1150 and 1400 I can't remember, to open the business, to do the advertising, buy the certifications, and all of that. As soon as I got my students lined up, I turned around and paid it all off in the first month. So that's the only debt we've ever had on our businesses. We run our businesses like we run our household, no debt. Um, and we, the only debt we have is 30 day terms when we buy material for a job and we turn around and pay that off as soon as we get paid. So that's it. All right. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you for listening. Bye-bye.